Good morning, Mission Control. Uh, kind of a, a mixed bag of weather here today. Uh, got the sun coming out, which is beautiful. It's going to heat the building. Uh, but you, know, you probably can't see it on the camera. We actually have a, a slurry coming down earlier this morning. Uh, it's 34 degrees Fahrenheit, and we had snow. So it is, uh, what is today? November 3rd. We're eight days ahead of November 11th, and we're now getting snow. So winter is coming earlier than last year by eight days. Um, so the rush is on uh, to get everything done. Um, I don't think I'm going to hit the November 11th deadline, to be quite honest. There's a chance. There's, there's still a good chance. Uh, but let me go over the things that we got to get done. Got a big fan to put in. Technically speaking, you're supposed to have a fan size to where you can turn over the amount of air in your building. I think it's once per hour, which means I should really have two of these. But I'm only going with one, and the reason for that is I have a dehumidifier inside already uh, that's helping remove a lot of the humidity, which is uh, the major concern that we have right now. In fact, I don't want to turn this thing on unless uh, there is a major humidity problem, uh, because when we turn this on, we're bringing cold air in from outside. Uh, which is good, it brings CO2 in, which will help the plants, but it's bad because it, um, on the back side here, it's actually two exhaust ports. So I'm gonna have one five foot uh, fan on the east side of the building, which is right behind us, and two uh, four foot exhaust ports on the other side that are all louvered, and uh, will eventually, all this will be controlled by automation. So we'll know, we'll only run the fans when it's daytime, when we have sun coming in, uh, and we will control the louvers and the fans with uh, relays that are all connected in, uh, into our automation system. So this is going to create quite a bit of automation work for me, which I can do, I was intending to do when the snow gets here, which is now, and I'm done with all this stuff. But uh, anyway, so I'm excited. Uh, normal greenhouses, of course, you got maybe a few of these, uh, you know, going at one time, and we're only going to go with one, and I think that will be good enough for us. We'll find out. So what I need to do, uh, I'm going to have to use a rope system. Uh, these things are actually pretty light, you can see here. Uh, so I think I can rope them up and pull them up into place. So i got to figure out how to do that and put cross members in for them to uh, secure it all down. And then I also have to uh, get insulation put around these and the plastic. So you saw previously, if you watch our videos, uh, where I sealed up the west end and I was saving the east end because it's going to be harder. It's going to make it even harder uh, to do that. But I also have to put the exhaust ports down on the west sides. I'm going to try to get to this today, uh, get this in. And my stretch goal is to get the east side sealed up with the fan in place. Uh, and then, of course, the west side with the louvers in place. And if I really could, I, I need to get the insulation in on each of the ends. And that will really help us start saving some uh, energy as far as uh, our heating costs go. Um, what else do I got? Yeah, so before November 11th, back to that, uh, gotta get the fans in, gotta get the ends insulated, and then I'm gonna get the north ceiling uh, and the south wall insulated. Like to do that all before November 11th. And then what I know I'm, I'm certainly most, definitely not gonna be able to get to is the moving insulation that is gonna go over, or I should say under, uh, the clear area uh, of the new cover. So we're actually going to have basically a garage door type of movement where the automation will detect light, it'll open, uh, just basically roll or pull uh, a garage door section, if that's the best way to view it, of insulation. So it'll go from the south side, it'll go and store in the north side, which will better help insulate the north side during the day, uh, keep it warmer, and then when the light's gone, it'll be pulled back into place, helping reduce heat loss on the south side. That's going to be a custom job. There's going to be quite a bit of work there. And like I said, there's just no way I'm going to be able to get to that before November 11th, but we're going to give it a shot. So I got to go inside. I'm going to take this thing apart. I'm going to see uh, how it's all going to mount. And uh, we got to figure that out, do some custom mounts in there, and then get to sealing this whole thing. So I got to stop talking to you guys, which is always fun because I kind of get my thoughts out and think through everything. Uh, but I need to get to work. And uh, if the snow comes again, I'll try to get you a nice shot of that. It is pretty. But it, uh, it also reminds me of the seven feet of snow that are piled up on the side of the building once it really decides to get going. So I'm going to stop talking and get it to work. That is a big fan. 
That is a huge fan. Nine amps. That's how many amps it's going to take to run this thing. It ain't going to have to run for very long though. So I'm going to put it on its own circuit. Uh, but yeah, it's going to come on. This thing's going to move some air. This thing's huge. Look at this. So the louvers on the other side. So these will open up. I'm going to turn the fan on. The air, air in. Wow. That is huge. There we go. And the motor that goes with it, which will also all be controlled by automation. So these will open, the other fan turns on and then they'll close. So, these will go on the east side. So, here's step number one. Got to get the fan up into that hole. But before we can get it up in that hole, we got to make a cross member going across the top. So I'm going to take one of these support brackets, which is longer uh, than the distance, and I'm going to chop it down so that I can make a cross member that goes up from left to right there. That's going to be my top support that the fan will hang from. And then I'll tie the, or also hook the fan in to that large bar, uh, vertical bar there. That should get pretty good stability, and I think I'll have to put one more bar uh, on this side to attach it to. So I'm going to go bang this thing down to the correct size and get the first cross member put up there and we'll see how this plan works. Alright, just got the cross member in. It is level. So everything hanging from it should be nice and level. Just got it tacked up there right now. Two bolts holding in but they're loose so I'm going to have to remember to tighten those when I figure out how I'm going to mount this whole thing. All right, let me show you what I got here as far as ideas go. First, I put that crossbar in right there. And we're going to use this bar right here with some C-clamps on it. I made the custom bracket right here. Three connection points, and then these are going to go around that vertical bar. I drilled in some U-bolts here. There should be enough to hold everything in place. Now the challenge is, I got to get this up in place. So I'm thinking ropes, using the top there as kind of a pulley, and then getting the ladder underneath of it to hold it in place while I somehow amazingly lift it. It's probably not going to work. Well, uh, been a little sore. It's in. Uh, I got three U-bolts up top now. I should put an additional one in. I have three connection points on the side going to two clamps pulling the uh, bracket, the big uh, piece of angle iron in. So all in all, I think that's five major connection points to the building. Uh, pretty safe, I think. The next step is I gotta go outside and actually cut the building open. Always fun and uh, secure the fabric to this unit. Boy, cutting fabric always is bad.
Well, there we go. Got the outside all cut out and uh, the vent is in. That thing's all secure. I got it uh, bolted around, screwed in quite a few times all the way around, so should have no problem with that staying in place. Huh, that was a lot right there. Um, so the good news is, again, whack-a-mole, right? You never get anything for free. Got the vent in, which is to deal with the fact that we have humid air inside, which creates a really bad environment for mold and mildew. We've got to get that humid air out. We also need to bring CO2 in. Now the heater that's in the building actually exhausts out, so we're actually blowing out burnt air, which has humidity in it, so we're getting rid of some humidity. But there's still a whole bunch of condensation in there, even with the heater running and the dehumidifier going. So this is a must for us to get rid of that extra humid air. In the summer, this will be key to actually help cool everything. It'll blow the hot air out. But you don't get anything for free. By putting this in, I actually created another place where cold air can get in. So now I need to go inside and put plastic on this entire side, but I'll still have some gaps right here. In the end, there's just nothing I can do. Well, there you go. Quite a day's worth of work, and I still have more to go today, but I'm gonna go ahead and end this video right here. I hope you enjoyed following along with me. We're making some big progress here. Uh, we have all the parts on site now uh, to complete everything, but November 11th is really coming fast, and this just took me all day. I still have a lot to do here, so. Uh, I better get back to it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. In the meantime, everyone, this is The Real Marshall. Out.